Welcome to Read and Write for Google Grown Parents Edition, brought to you by Prince George's County Public Schools Department of Special Education. My name is Jennifer Holloway and I am the Instructional Specialist for Assistive Technology and Accessibility. I'm so glad that you have joined us today to learn more about this wonderful tool. Let's get started. And we'd like to thank our Board of Education for the support and leadership that they provide for us. And then today, once this session is over, we hope that you will have learned how to use some of the features of Read and Write for Google Chrome. We want you to have learned how to better support accessibility at home for your child using a variety of resources. And Importantly, we want you to understand how Read and Write for Google Chrome will make a difference for your child and how you can help. And so what is Reading Write? Read and Write for Google Chrome is an extension. That means that it must be added to the Chrome browser in a Chromebook or laptop or a Macintosh. And an extension allows the application to do more than ordinarily. So that means it provides comprehensive reading and writing support in an easy to use toolbar format. It has text to speech options for reading content. It has talking and picture dictionary. It has writing tools like word prediction and voice dictation. And it also has colored highlighters for organization. So there are three parts that go to this program. And those three parts of the program, as we see here, are the Read and Write for Google Chrome extension. And it lets us know that this works in Google Drive, Docs, Slides and Forms, Google Classroom, and websites in the Chrome browser. And so we will be looking for an extension on your child's Chrome browser that looks like this. And we'll be looking for those, those extensions a little bit later in this training. And then you're also going to download the Text Help PDF Reader, and that works on PDFs and EPUB files that are also housed in Google. And then the extension that we will be looking for would look like this. And then they also have a screenshot reader. A screenshot reader will allow inaccessible text like maybe that gleaned from a copy machine or something or a picture or an image. And so screenshot reader will do optical character recognition or OCR to help your student read those things that may not be fully accessible. So now that we know what to expect, with read and write and what kind of toolbars we're going to see we have here a nice overview for you of read and write for google chrome it goes over all the features and just kind of gives a really nice overview of how robust this tool actually is and how it can help your student be successful so let's watch Welcome to this overview of Read and Write. My name is Paul. I work for TextHelp, and TextHelp is the company that produces Read and Write, as well as Fluency Tutor, Snapverter, Equatio, and Rikio. Read and Write is essentially a toolbar that has about 20 different educational technology tools on it, similar to apps and extensions. These tools are going to help students with reading, writing, research and organization. Many people refer to Read and Write as the Swiss Army knife of tools for educational technology. Before I show you what Read and Write is, it's important to show you what Read and Write does for students. In this example, a student was asked to answer and complete sentences. So here is that student's work. You can see he understands the concept in number one, but then number two, IDK, I don't know. Three and four, he's just got single words there, and then it kind of gets worse on the second page. 
However, here is that same student about a week later after using Read and Write. Let's look at another student. This student struggled with the writing process. It's easy to see here when you look at his handwriting. But after a couple days of using Read and Write, this is that same student. Some really amazing transformations are made with both of these students. How do we make those transformations happen? We combine tools like text-to-speech, dictation, prediction, writing tools, dictionaries, editing tools, study skills, and organizational tools into one easy-to-find, easy-to-use toolbar. Read and Write supports many different platforms. Today we're going to look specifically at Read and Write for Google Chrome. Read and Write for Google Chrome launched in 2013. We currently have over 20 million users and growing every day. And Read and Write helped TextHelp earn Google's Global Technology Partner of the Year Award. Read and Write supports students in Google Docs, web pages, LMS environments, Google Forms, Google Slides, Office 365, and also PDF files. So let's take a look. Here on my web page, if I want to bring Read and Write in, I go up to my extensions and I choose this purple puzzle piece. And there Read and Write is floating in my web page. Now the first thing most students are going to use Read and Write for is to read some text aloud. So I'm just going to grab some text here. And then when I press the play button, you're not only going to hear it read, but you're going to see it use dual color highlighting to emphasize the word that it's reading at the time to help students with tracking and decoding. The unique geography of the Arctic leads to unique weather patterns that reappear in the region year after year. Some weather patterns, such as cyclone... So I'll pause it there and explain also that Research has shown that when students have the option of a human reader or a computer reader, they generally fare better with a computer reader. And the reason is the students can stop it, they can start it, they can replay it as many times as they need, and then with a tool like Read and Write, they can also customize it. So here I can customize and bring in any number of different um, voices. I can also change the rate of the speech, how it's going to read, there's also translation tools, so I can change it to a language that I need. If I am Spanish speaking, I can also change the entire program to Spanish or French and a couple other languages there as well. And then if I want, I can remove certain tools from the toolbar if I don't need them, and I can switch around the order as well to customize it. When I look back at this web page, you'll see over here there is some text here, but this is not text that I can access. In other words, I can't grab it. It's part of an image. So to access this, we actually have the screenshot reader. And when I choose this and just pull a box around this text, it's going to scan it and then read it aloud to me. Sea level pressure composite mean, MB, October 1st to 30th, 2010. So really, pretty much any text that's on a web page, I'll be able to read one way or another. Some other helpful comprehension tools for web pages here are the talking dictionary. So if I don't know what a word is, I can have this read aloud to me. Now, shapes and colors, etc., put together in a regular way, a pattern on her shirt. And similarly, we also have a picture dictionary. And this is going to give me a visual representation of this word. And this has been really helpful for ELL students because it doesn't really matter what language they speak natively. They can look at the picture and they get it. And then lastly for comprehension here, a last couple of tools. If I am somebody who speaks a different language or ELL learner, I can choose the translator and it will translate this word and also speak it with that um, particular voice. Clima. And there's also here the screen masking tool, which allows students to, if they want to concentrate more, they can actually change the background color here. They can make it more opaque or transparent. I can make this little window here a little bit larger or smaller if I need to, to help me concentrate, or for some students that might use color overlays. Let's look now at some writing tools inside of a Google Doc. Here in the Google Doc, when I choose this little purple puzzle piece, now Read and Write is going to hang down in the document. A really helpful tool for students writing is word prediction. And word prediction, much like on our phones and other devices, is going to uh, recommend words that it thinks I want based upon what I'm writing. 
So here I'm going to put in today I walked to school. And you'll see all the options here when I hover over them, it's going to read them aloud. Was. Wasn't. What. And another great tip here is when students, if they are looking through some of these options here, they can use the picture dictionary and the talking dictionary at the same time. So now I can tell that's exactly what I want. I heard it read, I have a definition, and I also have a visual, so I'm going to pop that in. What's been so transformative for many students in these online collaborative live environments is the other students don't see these supports there. So I can show the other students that I can spell and I can write there just like they can, and they don't have to see the supports that I have. So it really has helped so many struggling students with confidence to be in those live environments. Another nice thing here about word prediction is there's a phonetic tool in here. So you'll see as soon as I put a Z in here for physics and it notices that I'm spelling phonetically, it's going to basically start giving me those words. Physics. So now I can pop that in and I'm good to go. Another really helpful tool for students in the writing process is speech to text. So when I choose the talking type here, I can just start talking and it's going to transcribe into the document everything that I'm saying. Today, I walked to school, period. And you'll note here, there's many different languages. So if you have students that um, are ELL learners and speak other languages natively, it will transcribe in their language as well, which is just great. Now, once you have written in the document, there's some great helpful tools here for proofreading. The first would be to use the text-to-speech to listen to your writing read back to you. It was a sunny day, so we went to the beach. Another great tool here is the Check It feature. And Check It is going to check grammar, punctuation, spelling, and a host of other errors. So for here, you can see when I choose it, it's an unpaired symbol. Uh, as I go down here and I want to look and see what this bear is, I can do that. It's also nice because I can use the picture dictionary here to define which bear this is. So it really helps me in that decision-making process. We have some really helpful guidelines here that help students and teachers understand when should we use certain tools in the writing process. Here we've got the six plus one traits writing process and you can see when we're pre-writing and we're doing brainstorming, gathering details, background research, here are the tools on read and write that can help and here are the symbols for those tools. So many schools will actually print these up and leave them in the computer lab or in the classroom and point to these on specific days that we're doing revising today. Here are the tools we're going to use. Another great tool here are the voice comments. So students that struggle with writing or typing or spelling, but they do know the answers, a great way for them to show what they know is to leave a voice comment. So here when I choose voice note, I can actually answer here with my voice. The lake near Cleveland is Lake Erie. And I can listen to that. The lake near Cleveland is Lake Erie. And if I'm happy with it, <laughs> I just insert it. And now just like a regular comment in a Google Doc, it's going to be there for anybody that has access to this Google Doc to listen to. So a teacher, instead of reading what the student wrote, if he or she may struggle with that, can just listen to what their response is. The lake near Cleveland is Lake Erie. Where this has been really helpful is with math. So many teachers and students, teachers expect students to explain how they came to the answer in math, and this is a great way to do it. So I can just highlight my math here and use the voice note to say, I added four to each side of the equal sign, so four, or x, equals 14. And then just insert that. So now the student or the teacher comes along and listens to it. Conversely, teachers can also leave notes in Google Docs for students using this feature. So it's a really helpful tool. If we go back to the web page we were looking at, there are some great study skills tools that are available for students as well. In this first example, I'm going to highlight some words that maybe are a struggle for me. I don't really know what they mean. So I've got patterns. I don't know what weather is. I don't know what these seasons are. I don't know what multiple is. And it doesn't matter which of these four colors I choose. When I'm done, I'm going to choose this vocabulary button. What vocabulary is going to do is basically build for me a vocabulary list and it's going to not only define the words, but it's going to give me a visual for the words, and it's going to give me a place where I can personalize it. 
So now I've got some definitions here I can choose from. Uh, and on the right hand side here, if I want to personalize this or customize this, I can just type in there or I can use the tools in Read and Write. Perhaps I'd want to use speech to text here to explain what this is. And I can, if I want, get rid of some of the other stuff here. But it makes it really simple for students and teachers to make these study guides for vocabulary. If I go back to this page, and I'll get rid of these highlights, and now let's say I'm doing some research or some studying, uh, I'm going to highlight some information that I think is important for Arctic weather, and I'm going to label that green. And there's some more information. And then down here, anything that has to do that's important with cyclones, I'm going to do yellow, and look, there's another green. And as I go through my document here on my web page, I'm color coding the information. And right now it's getting a little discombobulated, but that's okay. I'll show you what we can do with this. So there's something that's green. There's something else that's yellow. Now when I'm done, I choose this Collect Highlights button. And what it's going to do is it's also going to, again, make a new Google Doc, save it into Google Drive, but it's going to take all the information I have highlighted and organize it by color in the document. It also gives me a link at the bottom to where I got the information in case I've got to create a bibliography but a really great tool for students that struggle with organization. And one of the last things here to point out on the web pages is, let's say that I am in this web page and it's kind of busy for some students. There's a lot going on. It might distract some students. I can choose the simplify page. And what simplify page is going to do is it's going to take the text from that page and open it up in a new tab and get rid of all the visual distractions. So now it makes it a lot easier for me to concentrate, and it automatically opens up Read and Write here so that I can use this to access the content if I need to. So really, really helpful tools there. Last couple things to show, here's a PDF. And so if I need to have this read aloud, I can use the read aloud features here on the toolbar in our PDF viewer. I've also got those familiar tools of picture dictionary and talking dictionary, so if I needed the something over here, let's say journey. I can look up the picture there. I can do a talking dictionary. I can also, if I want to, use those same types of study skills tools like highlighting and pulling them into um, collected highlight documents. I can also have them defined if I want to, which is great when you're dealing with things like science to define these words. And then lastly, we recently added in some tools where students can add shapes and drawing, either freehand or existing shapes there into the document. So if I wanted to, I could add that in here. And I can change the colors and all those sorts of things to customize it there. The last thing to point out here is you can also leave some comments in here, much like the ones we did in the Google Doc. So if I'm sharing this with someone, I can actually leave a comment here. And if I want, I can speak the comment. I can use word prediction like we've seen before. I can leave a voice note speech to text, and I can leave that in there, and anybody else that has access to this document using Read and Write for Google is going to be able to see these comments and add to them as well. As I mentioned earlier, if I'm in a Microsoft environment, so here I'm basically using Office 365, Read and Write works great inside of this environment as well. There is a sweeping trend across the nation of cloud-based technology in school districts. This is particularly great if you've got districts that are not only using Microsoft, but also are using Microsoft and Google to have the exact same support be available in the Google and Microsoft environments. And then you can also use it, as I mentioned before, in Google Forms. So if I want, I can use the speech to text to respond here, that sort of thing. And then if I'm creating something in Google Slides here, I can use things like the word prediction right inside of Google Slides. We've got a great web page. It's got some great resources, uh, video sources on YouTube. And so you can go there to check out some of those tools or those videos that are going to help you understand certain sections of what I just showed you on the toolbar. If you go to training.texthelp.com, you'll also find that there are some modules for all of our products. So if you want to learn more about how to use Read and Write, you can basically get certified as a Read and Write teacher here, self-paced, and it's completely free. When you want to add Read and Write, you can just go to texthelp.com and look up our products. Okay. All right. That was great information. I know that it was long and it was a lot. But no one's expecting you or your child to know this tool immediately. 
We have lots of support available for you. Text Help has a lot of support that they have created, which we will give you links and information to access. And then also you have the support of your child's teacher. Uh, you have the support in PGCPS of the assistive technology team and the support of myself, Jennifer Holloway. So you have lots of support um, in learning how to use this tool so it can be most effective. So let's move forward and look at a few more things. So this is just, it's a comprehensive toolbar. So it's everything that's spread out among the three toolbars that we talked about earlier. So it's just, it's very nice to know that how you see these words out here, if you hover over um, any icon in a toolbar, it will tell you what it is in case you forget. So right now, I want you to take a minute, one minute, and on your child's computer, on their Chrome toolbar, see if you can locate just this purple puzzle piece on the toolbar. So just see if you can locate that. And I'm gonna set a timer for one minute and I'm gonna give you one minute in order to find your toolbar. So let's get started. Got about 30 seconds to go, guys. Ten seconds. We are finding our purple puzzle piece on our child's Chrome toolbar. Our time is up. Did you find your toolbar? Did you have a few minutes just to kind of just familiarize yourself with the fact that it's a toolbar and how it appears? I know you didn't have much more time to do anything further than that. But that's where we want to start. We want to just be able to find the toolbar and how to get to it. So let's move forward. So now we have a video. It's not an 18 minute video like the one was before. This is a about a two to three minute video. And I'm sharing this with you because this is good for introduction to this tool for your child. And it also is something that can be helpful in helping them learn and feel comfortable with the tool. So let's check this one out. Hi there. Today we're going to see how Read and Write can help when you're using Google Docs or just browsing the internet. Okay, let's start by seeing what we can do in Google Docs. Here's the purple Read and Write icon at the top of your screen. Click on it and this toolbar appears. First of all, let's read some text out loud. Put the cursor anywhere you want. Click play and it starts reading like this. Honey is a kind of sugary syrup. And you can stop at any time. Pick a word, like this, and use the dictionary to explain what it means. And there's a picture dictionary right here too. Click on the prediction icon, and Read and Write will help you by guessing words that you're typing. Put your mouse over the suggested word to hear it read aloud. Insects. If that's the word you're looking for, click to insert it. Click here near the right of the toolbar to change settings if you want to. There are lots of different reading voices to choose from. 
and you can change reading speed if it's too fast or slow. You can hide the toolbar anytime you don't need it by clicking on the read and write icon again. Okay, read and write isn't just for Google Docs. You can use it when you're browsing web pages with Google Chrome too. Click the read and write logo in the address bar right here and the toolbar pops up. Most features are pretty similar to when you're using Google Docs. With reading aloud, this time you can hover over to hear the text. I had a chance to talk to the show's creator. You can stop reading anytime. The dictionary lets you look up what words mean and hear the definitions read aloud. Double click to highlight a word and press the dictionary button to see what it means. Click on the dictionary to listen to it. Adjective, having life or vigor or spirit. And of course, there's a picture dictionary too. Double click to highlight a word, then click right here to see images related to the word you've selected. This fact finder is really useful if you're doing homework or researching an assignment. Highlight a word and click here to see search results from Google. Thanks for watching. Awesome. So that was, you know, just a, a much smaller introductory video. Um, that's definitely more kid friendly than our 18 mini minute overview video. So you'll also have, you know, I talked about resources at the beginning. So you'll have resources like this resource, which is a quick reference guide for tool usage. And so it tells you that this is a document that will review the tools available on docs, the web, and the PDF toolbars, which we talked about earlier in our conversation. So as you can see here, if we take text-to-speech, it shows you the icons that are related to that specific tool. And then it tells you what toolbar that the icon is found on, what it does, and how you access it. And then over on the far right, it tells us how to make the tool work. And so this is very handy to have um, as you're learning the tool, as your child is learning the tool. And, you know, maybe it's something that you work one on one tool a week or however long may be necessary for your child to feel comfortable with the tool. Um, and that is only going to come through practice. So you have lots of resources here to help you practice um, with your child at home. So that I hope that's comforting once you saw all the tools. And so I'm really interested in knowing, you know, what your thoughts are about this. And so take just a few minutes and maybe reflect on what you've seen so far, what you're most excited about, um, and, and what you really think that your child could benefit from the most, which would lead you to know which one you might hope to start helping to support them on. So I'm just going to give you like maybe 30 seconds. And in that 30 seconds, just think about what you've learned about the tool already. Got about five seconds to bring your thoughts to close. All right, so I hope those things were good. I, if you want to share them with me, I'm happy to have you share them with me. You can feel free to email me and let me know what your thoughts were about this tool and what your hopes are for this tool in supporting your child's needs. Okay, so. Big question, right? Where are my resources? So the resources for this are housed in a tool called Wakelet. So you can go to this address, this web address, and enter this code, and it will take you to the information. 
You can also use your cell phone to select this code, or I'm sorry, this QR code. And once you capture the QR code, it will take you to the Wakelet. So let's go there now and see what that looks like. So Wakelet is a way that we use to curate and save information and to provide details for you like I am doing right now. So it is going to ask you to put in your name. And so if you would please put in your name. And then as it comes up, we are going to see that we have a parent's guide to text help read and write for Google Chrome. And so it's learning anywhere for parents. And so up here in the corner, we see that you can follow this wakelet so that anytime anything is added in it or changed in it, you would be aware of that. So let's look at this a little bit and see what's actually here. So it tells us, it just gives us a little bit of information about the fact that we're using um, Read and Write for Google Chrome and, and what's going to happen, how you're going to get information, which we'll also go over later in the presentation, but you'll be able to refer to it back here on the Wakelet. And so there is a parent's tour involved. And so that is just a short video that explains what the software does and how it helps. And so you have training videos here as well to help get your students started and help support what your student is doing in the classroom. And then we want you to help us make sure that your student adds that extension. So it gives you information about what you need, which would just be your child's school email address and password. And then once you're notified by your child's school, you'll receive or you can come here to the Wakelet and look at the read and write installation instructions that are specific to Prince George's County Public Schools. And then here are a few more videos. These videos will actually, they are, I'm sorry, videos. They are actually links to the Chrome store for these two items. So that if you have a hard time finding them, in the PGCPS Chrome store, or for whatever reason you can't get there, then you can go here to download those tools. And so then here are some very nice um, documents that TextHelp has created to help us use our Google Chrome Read and Write. And so let's take a gander at just one of these tools just to so, and this was key tools for specific needs. And so they have here, like in elementary, you have the text-to-speech tools. They may need the word prediction or the screen masking, or they may need to practice reading aloud. And then you have a different set of tools that may be more appropriate for middle and high school students. But as we all know, it's really based on what your student needs and not necessarily what this document says. All right, so we have the quick reference guide that we looked at that actually tells you the tool, which toolbar you can find it on and how to use it. And I really like this Let's Get It Read document because it gives you, which people find a lot of times um, more necessary than some of the other tools, but this is these are all the text-to-speech tools that are available for you on Read and Write for Google Chrome. And so, for example, Click to Speak, it tells you that it's only found on the PDF toolbar and how you have to get it to read. And then there is an excellent how to use video in case you want to watch how to use instead of you know reading how to use it so that's available for you and in our wakelet and so also this is a great intro and practice activity not just for your child our student 
but also for you. So let's look at this quickly. And so it gives you instructions on what actually it wants you to do. So you get the opportunity to listen, you get the opportunity to um, dictate using speech to text, you get, you know, an activity about how to review what you've written. So you get a lot of training or exposure in this one document that can help you and your student better learn how to use read and write for Google Chrome. And so also here, there is a parent's guide if you have problem accessing the program, then this is the, the support that you would need to go to. And these are also these resources that I was talking about earlier to actually increase accessibility to um, school information for your student. But of course, as always, if you need more help or information, you can check out the quick reference guides that we have above. You can visit the YouTube channel. You can stop by texthelp.com. You can always check with your child's teacher, or you can email me, jennifer.holloway at pgcps.org. And it's important that you check with your school for information related to how they may be using the tool for that week or that month or, or what they've set up so that your support at home really provides your child with um, comprehensive learning on one tool so that they feel success in knowing how to use this wonderful tool. And so that was our parents guide that uh, that's on Wakelet that you will have access to. Um, as I said, you'll have all this information. This is where your resources are going to be for Wakelet. You can follow me on Wakelet so that if there's any updates, you can be sure to get those as well. And so this was, we already saw our quick start guide for using Read and Write to, for Google Chrome. But since you're watching this video on your own, I'd like for you to pause the video right now and using the information in Wakelet or on the video, you can access this quick start guide and try using a couple of those, of those tools and see how it works. Thank you for coming back. I hope you enjoyed doing those activities and it really showed you how easy this is going to be for your child and for yourself and what great outcomes are going to happen as a result of your student using this tool and you helping them use it at home. So what's next? So for our students, we will be sending out verification sheets to their school that will verify that they are a child who has the text-to-speech accommodation on their IEP. And so once that's verified by the school, they will send the information back to me. And then once the student has been added to the software database, they'll use the installation instructions, which is in your resources, to install the tool. And then once installed, they'll be able to use the tool right away. And in those worksheets I showed you are things that you can help use to support your child learning this tool at home. And then also, if your student is going to require headphones, then the teachers will be able to identify that need on the verification form. And there's no timeline for when students will be added to the software database because it's dependent upon when their, their teacher or the school team identified school individuals will actually be able to attend training because that's the catalyst for the students receiving um, access to the tool is, is the educators coming in, being trained, and then provided that list of students who have a text-to-speech accommodation for them to then verify. So parents, what's next for you? For you,
you're going to receive an informational letter that is going to inform you when your child has access to the tool through their Chrome browser. You will also have access to this training video through the Family Support Center and in the conference resources. And then, I've been saying it and I'm going to continue to say it, we are here to support you so you will have the ability to access myself during office hours at jennifer.holloway at pgcps.org. And those office hours will be, will be given to you when your child receives their access. So when you get that informational letter, you'll also get that information about exactly what office hours are going to be available. So any questions, anything you need, any support, please, please feel free to email me at jennifer.holloway at pgcps.org. And we are so glad that you came to join us today to learn about this phenomenal support that is going to help your child make better progress. Thank you. Goodbye.